Well, welcome to our session on using the Sunset Bible Library with the eSword Bible software. Of course, we have to start out by defining what those two things are for many people before they even understand that. You should have had on your chair a copy of the uh, basic outline material, not all of which we'll be able to cover during this hour this morning, but hopefully uh, resource information for you. The second sheet is uh, actually an explanation about the Sunset Bible Library and what's included in that. So as we talk about that this morning, you will have uh, that as a, a guide or a, a way to help you understand if you are not already familiar with it. When I first started studying the Bible, and I don't mean reading the Bible, I mean studying the Bible and discovering how to use other resources that go along with that, a gospel preacher took me under his wing, and on Sunday afternoons after church, he would take me home. I was a college student. He and his wife would feed me lunch. I would eat with his family, and then after the dishes were cleared off the dining room table, he said, okay, I, I've got to finish working on my sermon for tonight. So why don't you sit here with me and help me? And of course, I wasn't a bit of help, actually, you know, but he was just trying to help me understand how to do this. So here would come out his Bible and probably another couple of printed translations he had. He would get out his uh, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, his Thayer's Lexicon, his Vine's Expository Dictionary. He would have his Bible Dictionary there and maybe uh, right at hand the ISBE, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, and uh, maybe a commentary or two that covered the section of Scripture that he would be preaching out of that night. And we would go to work. And pretty soon, of course, that table would be covered with books open. Some of them stacked on top of other books. And here was his Bible and here was his notepad. And he would be just talking out loud to me as he's going through this process. He said, now we look at this passage here. One thing we want to know is what does this word mean that's here? And what's, who's the author and why is he writing this book in the first place? And here in the context it mentions a certain place or a certain event or someone else. So let's find out about them. And so he would hand me the Bible dictionary and say, look up Euodia and Syntyche, or look up Pergamum and read it to me. And that, that's how I learned to start studying the Bible, to bring in the resources to illuminate the text and explain the text. And his rule was, uh, from the very beginning is, the last book you look at is the commentary. After you've done all your own research and done all you can to learn what that passage means, then go see what someone else says about it and uh, don't let them be the first word or even the last word on that, but let them help you discover anything maybe you missed. Well, that's how... Many people still study if they study at all. Many folks think study is just reading, and that's not study. Could I ask a question? Yes, sir. Clarification. Is, is the uh, SIBI uh, library, am I understanding it's available to work yes. inside? Yes, right that's right. Okay. And so, in fact, if you look on the front of your handout, uh, let me start out and quickly tell you what the Sunset Bible Library is. Uh, a number of years ago, we began to develop our own textbooks to go with our online and satellite school courses. These are not necessarily the same textbooks that are used inside of the classrooms here at Sunset, though in fact many of them are. But these are specifically for our students who are taking courses online and for students who are in our satellite school program which are thousands of people studying sunset materials in congregations all across the United States through the Satellite School program. And we started developing our own textbooks because we were having so much trouble uh, keeping textbooks available for students. About the time we would settle on a new textbook for a certain course, the publisher would discontinue it. Or he would double the price on it or it would go out of print and it would be two years before they planned on printing more and that was just became such a 
difficult thing for us. We finally said, we already have the guys who know what they're teaching. Let's work with them and the material they have and produce these uh, commentaries. They're not as in-depth as some others you can get, but they do cover the exact same material that the courses themselves cover. And we know what their theological stance is. We know what they're teaching. We know what they believe. And we know we can rely on that. And so over the years, we've produced our own textbooks for almost all of the 40 core courses that we have online and in our satellite schools. And that is our Sunset Bible Library, those uh, books. Of those, 33 are accessible to us to uh, put into something other than print form right now. Some of the textbooks we still use for our courses are still being published by other people and they have not, have not given us permission to use those in this way yet. But that's the Sunset Bible Library. First in print, then we started making them available in digital format. Uh, first of all in what's called PDF, which can be read on just about any computer or tablet or even many smartphones if you have them. And then as it became more popular, they also are now available in the Kindle bookstore if you have a Kindle ebook reader. Uh, or have a Kindle app on your phone or tablet or whatever. They're also available in the Barnes & Noble Nook bookstore. They're available in the Apple iBook store. Uh, but these are the, just the individual books. But we've had this dream from the very beginning to find some suitable Bible software program that would allow us to take our materials and integrate it into that Bible software program. Bible software programs, I've been using them for almost 30 years. Way back when it was only DOS, long before even people could spell Windows. And uh, they were awful, but they were better than nothing. And uh, so I've been using Bible software programs a long time. And once Windows came out and Bible software started coming out for the Windows program and started becoming a very usable products, we have talked with a number of the publishers of those programs about what would it take for us to get our materials into your program. And some of them said, no amount of money. Basically, they want to totally control what's in their product. And that's fine, it's their product. Others say, oh yes, we have a program for that. Uh, we'll charge you $1,000 per book, and we will sell your books in our store and you have the uh, warm, fuzzy feeling of knowing that your students can come to our store and pay uh, full price for their books and put them into our Bible software. Yeah. We, in other words, we hadn't, other than just providing the book and letting them make the money off of it, uh, that, there was not much control. So finally we settled on a program that a number of us already here were using, me included. I've been using eSword Bible software for about 12 years, I think, from the early days, pretty much. And it had a number of things that really uh, commends itself to us. First of all, they allow us to use free tools they provide to us to take our own books and put them into the product without any restriction except we have to say that our materials are not officially condoned by the publisher of the product. And, and that would only be fair. He's just saying, okay, that's Sunset stuff. It works with them, our stuff, but we're not responsible for what Sunset puts in there. And, and, and really that's the only restriction. Well, other, the second one is we cannot sell eSword software because it's not for sale, it's free. And we cannot sell it, we cannot package it with our product and sell our product with it in there. So we have to tell people, if you want to use eSword and you don't have it already, you go to their website, this is on the screen behind you here, and there's a blue button there that says download eSword, right there, and you download it and install it on your computer. This is the Windows PC based version of it. And uh, then uh, at that point, then you can come to us and get our Bible library and download and install it into it. Yes, sir? Do they have it for Apple? 
They do have it for Apple. Although it's not on this website, they will have a link here, but you actually, if you have a Mac, and I assume you do, if you have a Macintosh computer by Apple, then you go into the, the Apple Store, App Store that they have. There's a, a link right on the home page of your, or your desktop of your Mac, and go search for eSword. And it's there, and the, Isn't it called MySword? No, it's called eSword. Actually, it's called eSword 10 or eSword X because Apple runs the OS 10 operating system, and so it's called eSword 10 with an X. It's $9.99. Uh, he does not give that away free, and the reason for that is, is he's trying to develop that product. He's turning around and taking that $7 that Apple gives him of the $10 and is paying his programmers to keep improving that product to get it up to the same level that the Windows PC version is. It's several years behind in development because he's only had it out for about a year now. It's also available on your iPad or your iPhone through the the iOS app stores, if any of you have either of those two products, and it's $4.99 for the iPad and $1.99, I think, for the iPhone. And they have varying capabilities. We're focusing here on the Windows PC version because it's the most mature of the products, and it's the one that we're actually making our materials available for now. We already have ours working with the Mac. And sometime in the next few weeks, and if you're on our emailing list, if you've checked yes, you can tell me about it. As soon as we actually release our Mac version, you will get an email saying, uh, here's how to get our Mac version, purchase it, and how to install it on your Mac. And the same thing with the iPad. As soon as we, we've got it running on the iPad already. They just haven't given us an easy way to install it there. And I had to use a hack and a back, back door and uh, some secret knowledge in order to get it running on mine, but it runs great. But I don't know how to tell you how to do that. Bill Gates how to do that. <laughs> well, the truth is Bill Gates says he doesn't own a single Apple product and never will. But he almost divorced his wife when he found out she had an iPad. But, uh, but uh, yeah, we're, this morning we're focusing on the eSword for Windows PC because it's the most mature product. The majority of people right now have Windows-based computers, and uh, so this will apply to the, the majority, but maybe not to all entirely. But the Windows-based PC version of it is free, along with many, many resources. So that's what appealed to us, was we could put our product in there. Uh, the product is free. That's very important for our international students, because many of them are on very limited budgets, and uh, this would allow them to have a Bible program that uh, would work on their computer. And it's pretty safe for us to assume they have a computer or they wouldn't be online taking our course. And, and we can then put our material in there. And for many of them, we provide our material uh, basically free of charge. Even this Bible library. They are on scholarships that uh, generous donors are helping provide for. And so we can give this to them and they can take their courses. Uh, for those of us who live in the United States, you will have to pay for it. But uh, we've tried to make it as reasonable as we can. Uh, back to our complete Bible library, if you take the entire thing, 33 volumes of our books, I think in print, it's like 380 something dollars. If you bought every single one of those books in the Kindle format and you just wanted to read the books themselves, without there being a Bible program wrap, wrapped around it, then you're going to pay probably around $170 or $180 at least uh, for those same books. But if, if you want it to go inside of your eSword Bible software, it's $49.99. And so you're getting exactly the same material in, in every one of those cases.